Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Strat Gamer here, providing you with a new Ano 1800 episode today, and we're going to cover probably one of the most asked question ever on be it on Reddit, on Facebook, the Twitch uh, streams everywhere. One of the questions that always comes up is which DLC should I buy? So that's what we're going to cover today. Obviously, I'll start by saying that if you can, try to buy them all. <laughs> um, I know is is really one of the oh, I know eighteen hundred is really one of the, my favorite games of all time. I think it's it's way underrated by many people, and all of the season, all of the DLCs are great to some extent or provide something. But if you're here, it's probably that you're thinking, man, yeah, maybe I don't want to buy them all, or at least not one, not all of them at the same time. So where do I start? So let's dive in into that. But before we do, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you're into strategy games, city building games, simulations, that's exactly what I cover. From let's plays to also tips and tricks and reviews of games, I have it all. Also, please don't let this day to join my Discord community, you can find the link in the description below. But let's dive in. So the DLCs. So the first thing to understand is, at least at this point, um, there are three different seasons, one, two, and three, and there are also some additional contents pack. The Anarchist and these four contents pack, we know that additional contents pack uh, are coming. We don't know yet if there will be a season four, at this point, we've heard there's probably not a season 4, but they also said that for season 3 and then season 3 came. So, um, let's see. Now, let's quickly cover these because they are a bit outside. All of these here are mostly what I would call uh, cosmetic packs, and you can even see it in the, in the description. So, they are not really providing any gameplay, well, not at all. But they do provide a lot of different ornaments, and obviously, as you can see, this is providing you a lot in the spirit of, of Christmas, or the um, end of your holidays. This is a lot more on amusement parks. This is for your uh, the skins of your vehicles, mostly. So all of these will will help you if you want to do uh, more beautiful cities, but not really change your gameplay. The Anarchist and came with the de Deluxe Edition um, early on. Actually, does change gameplays in some ways. Um, the first element is that it brings a new character, which is this character here, Hugo Mercier. Um, and with that character, there is uh, a lot of new missions, a lot of new achievements and also a lot of new items and some of these items are actually quite strong so for the gameplay that can quite that can help you quite a bit and in particular if you are a min maxer meaning that you want to really optimize as much as possible your city you're trying to get as much population as possible he has some some great items so um, you know depending on the obviously um with him, sorry, lastly, is also came, comes a, a storyline, a new story. So I'm not gonna say that it, you know, it's uh, hundreds of hours of, of a new story, but it does bring quite quite a few elements with that. So if you can get it for for not too much, um, this is definitely a great one to have, and I, I have it. Um, if we click here, you know, you can see actually, as he says, over 50 new items over 50 new quests. Some are you know, quests that pop up uh, at any time and others are, are from that uh, storyline I mentioned. And lastly, this new player. Then we have season one, two, and three. And when each of those DLC comes out, there's also um, you know, an update to the base game that comes for free with changes to the game. We're obviously not going to talk about these because you don't need to buy those DLC to get them, right? So we'll really focus on the content that comes only with those DLCs and go season by season. And uh, at the end, we'll also conclude on which you know to buy first or uh, second. So the first one is the passage. It's often one of the least liked, to be honest, um, by many. It does bring uh, a completely new region, which is called the Arctic. You can see here, um, if you have bought the Arctic and you're a bit stuck, don't hesitate to check on my channel. There's many um, 
videos on, on the Arctic. With that new region also comes a story. So there's a story to get to that region and also when you are in this region uh, a story which is quite good. You know, it's, it does bring quite a few hours of gameplay into it. Then there are a few things that you will only be able to do if you have the Arctic. The first one is build airships and that you can see here. Without the Arctic, you know, usually you only have ships on, on the sea. Now you're going to have these airships uh, on the sky, right? So that's that's definitely the first thing. And these airships are, are quite good in some conditions. They are impacted by w the wind, right? So when the wind is behind them, they are super, super fast. When uh, the wind is obviously against them, they are not as fast as your best uh, steamships. But they can they can be quite useful, in particular if you are um, always annoyed by pirates or by strong AIs. They usually can't do anything about them, right? Because there's not a lot of there's no anti-air guns <laughs> in in Ano. So these are quite interesting. And then the last uh, element is the gas fire power plants. So once again, this is something you can only get if you have the Arctic. Um, it will produce electricity, so it's similar to the oil that you find in the old or new world. But um, with the gas, you don't need railways, and you also have a larger um, you know, area of influence for one gas power plant. So this can be quite useful in, in, a, big, um, you know, in, in a big city like... Uh, the Cape Trelawney, if uh, you don't want to get railways or, or to the end. Obviously with this new region it also comes with two new tiers of residents, the explorers and technicians, and many new chains that are um, mostly focused on the Arctic, some of them also linked to, to the old world. Um, there is also two elements you can get in the Arctic, in a sense better than the other region and it's gold and fur where your gold what's called deep gold mines will produce a lot quicker than your normal gold mines in in the new world and similarly your prime antique cabins are producing four times quicker than the normal antique cabins so this is the passage um, and one and last element to to mention is that the islands in the Arctic are usually quite small, not a lot of shore, so there's there's a bit of complexity. It's a challenge to do the the passage well on the Arctic well. So this is the first one, and once again, at the end, we'll sort of conclude on which one to buy first. But first, I want to describe them. Then it's it's Botanica. Botanica introduced a new cultural building, which is a botanical garden that you can see here. Um, if you want to see, you know, big, bu big, beautiful botanical gardens, don't hesitate to check out my beauty building series that will pop up at the top. Basically, those botanical gardens, similar to the other cultural sets like the zoo and the museum, can provide you with some bonuses, for example, fertilities or uh, reduce your sickness uh, risk. That was, you know, the main thing. It it didn't brought that much more to to the game, so that's definitely not one of the first that you're gonna want, to be honest. Um, and then the third one was Sunken Treasures. This one is is very well known because it brings the Cape Trelawney, which is the and you can see it here. It's that island here, which is the biggest island ever, and right? it's. Um, I don't know, three, four times bigger than any other island in the game. So if you want to, to construct a mega city, if you want to have a lot of people, that's definitely um, something you'd want. So, that, so as I said, this is bringing a new region completely, to, you know, with, with a few islands and one fast island. With that also comes a story. It's not the most difficult, more challenging, bigger story, to be honest. Um, but it is interesting. Then there is something completely new, which is you're going to have a diving vessel that you can see here. And with that, you can you know, get things from, from the sea, be it treasures, animals, things like this. And you'll also get uh, you know, scratch things where you can create new items. 
and it's a bit similar to uh, to the Arctic in the passage where you can also um, find some uh, some scratch and create some items. But um, yeah, so that that will bring you once again some new items to to play with and to improve your. Uh, it, it can improve quite a bit of things like your ships, but also um, your productivity in particular for um, for coastal buildings. So yes, this is um, you know if you really want a big capital, this is one to to remember. So that was season one. Then moving on to season two, we have quite a, a different things. Um, and actually, sorry, uh, by time, you know, this was the first one, then the second, and the third, uh, instead of that way. So maybe let's start here. So seat of power brings you a new major building, which is the palace that you can see here, and it's a modular building where you know you build. Uh, a first main building and then many wings, a bit like your zoos, where you you have the zoo and then you build exhibits around here. There's a lot of mechanics, I won't go into too much detail, but basically the, the palace can give you huge bonuses across many things and that's uh, what you can see here on your workforce, uh, your chance of getting items, your attractiveness, your storage, your productivity. So there's five departments and can be huge and it's not just on one so on one city you build your palace and then on all of your other islands you can build what's called a local department to also get some of those bonuses um, with policies so that was you know that was the really the the main thing in the seat of power so that obviously helps a lot if you want to you know do min maxing really have big cities or just make your games easier right if you, even if you're not trying to maximize but you're just trying to have a game that's a bit easier that helps uh, for sure then moving to the bright harvest so this one didn't bring a new uh, region either but it did bring two major um, advancement to your cities with the silos and tractors so the silos are for animal farms like your pig farms versus the tractors are more for your um, crop farms like your wheat your vineyard but also all of the it actually also works in all of the other regions so we're going to talk later about Mbesa it uh, works also in the new world so this is actually on one of the only DLC that is very linked to other DLCs because it also works in the other regions. Versus for most of the other DLCs, they are usually um, kind of independent. And that's also why this question of which to buy actually makes sense because they're, they're quite independent and modular. But anyway, these silos and tractor actually boost your productivity like crazy for these uh, farms. So once again, if you want to either optimize your city or have sort of a, an easier time at it, it can help uh, quite a bit. This uh, to work also need fuel stations, so it's a new mechanic and the fuel station comes from oil, um, but honestly not that hard to, to figure out. So that's Bright Harvest, you know, it, it really changed a lot how people's farms, uh, layouts and things like this were, um, but brought uh, a lot for the optimization of your city, let's say. And then lastly, Land of Lion. This is the only new region in this season two. And as you can understand from Land of Lion, it's sort of Africa, I would say mainly East Africa. So it, it brings this new region called Mbesa. And in this region, you also get a great new story. I say great because it, it does, you know, it's it's a long story that takes you from Mbesa to also other regions. What many people don't like about this story, to be honest, is there's a lot of clicking, like finding um, small houses or moving things from one to another or following somebody around, which can be tedious in a game like um, Anno, which is mostly of a, you know, it's, it's not a... Um, it's not the Age of Empire, for example, where you're really used to move to those type of quests. Um, so that that is um, the history. In this region, 
you know, similar a bit to the Arctic, it it does bring a challenge. It's it's not one of those reason region that just a copy paste in terms of gameplay, because you need to to harness the power of water. So you need to to really basically fertilize all of the land, um, and that brings quite some interesting challenges in terms of gameplay. And then the last element, not the last, sorry, there's two elements linked to it. On top of this new region that comes with two um, tiers of population you also create a new tier of population in your old world and these are scholars so they are not they are not on top of your investors they are a bit on the side basically and these uh, scholars will work or will help um, in your research institute which is this building here and in this research institute you can do tons of things the two main things that you can do is develop items. So any, almost all of the items in the game can be developed there. So instead of you know buying them, instead of find, finding them in expeditions, you can just uh, construct them. And here you, you sort of choose, right? It's not a gamble like when you buy. It's you say, I want Ferris, for example, and it will build Ferris. And the second element is major discoveries. And these ones are huge. It's things like changing the fertilities in your island, moving your oil fields or clay deposits that usually are in the middle of your island and, and annoy you to, to no end. Or, um, you know, many, many of those things like this, uh, you can also construct more <coughs> more of the unique ships and things like this. But there's a lot of things that this monument um, to knowledge, as they say, this research institute can help you do. So this is the Land of Lion, uh, honestly, I think one of the great one. And then lastly, we are arriving to season three, which is, as you can see, underway. We don't have the last one yet, but we do have the first two. So let's look at, and, and we'll discuss a, a bit uh, the third one, at least what we know so far. So the Dockland is the first one. Dockland was you know, when it came out, really uh, many people had, had very mixed feelings, and I'll try to to show both sides. So the first one is you create this dockland, which is a bit like your palace, but in the port. So instead of being on your on your island, it's in the the port, um, in the coastal uh, area that you will build it. It brings you tons of bonuses, like a um, quick. Uh, you know, a, a very quick way to unload and load resources um, or a lot of items, Arbor Master items that you can put there, um, repair cranes. And lastly, it brings a, a new functionality that is called import-export. And with this functionality, you can almost uh, trade every single resources in the game. So... And it's not limited. The main difference between passive trade with, with your traders is that it's not limited to just a few um, items, each, a few resources each turn. Is if you, you know if you have um, the reserve in your reserve ten thousand gold or ten thousand uh, penny farthing, for example, you can ex export in one go, like in at when the, the, the trader comes to you, in one go, those 10,000 can, can be exported to import something else. So this is huge. Um, there's a, a few mechanics in there around you know, becoming very well known for a specific good and therefore having better exchange rate for it, but we won't go into too much of the detail. These um, mechanics brought two things. One is, it was a lot. It's a lot easier with this to have, you know, one island challenge, for example, where you produce all on one island because you're able to import what you're not producing. Um, and the second thing it brought is is a bit of a, um, let's say, cheesing element where you can start producing a lot of things and sell them for more than than what they, they're costing you. So, for example, you can easily produce tons of fish right with um, with the cost uh, line that you have with items and things like this and it will cost you barely anything in terms of space in terms of workforce in terms of maintenance and with all those these fish that you're producing you can actually uh, sell it for quite a lot of things but even more than that you go into situations where 
for example, you will, you know, you need, let's say, gold to make jewelry. And then you're going to sell the jewelry for a lot more gold than what it required you to make it. And therefore, you know, you, you sort of quickly get to crazy amount of goals almost for free. And the last sort of um, extension of that cheesing is when you're using items on your, uh, on your production factories with trade unions, you can really you know, get to situations uh, that are a bit absurd. Or, for example, if you want to look at the current world record of population, uh, you can click on the video that's at the top now. It's, it's almost 6 million people. And those 6 million people are actually fed by only 80 per penny farthing factories. There's nothing else on the whole map, on the whole you know, empire. There's no production at all of any goods because just with those penny farthing uh, factories, with the right items, you're producing so much one penny farthing, but also extra goods that you can sell all of these for all of the production, all of the uh, goods that are required to feed those six million people, so it's it's really cheesing, right? Like you you basically have a map with only people and nobody is working, nobody is uh, is be and but everybody is fe being fed. <laughs> so that that was you know a bit what many people don't really like about Dockland, but we do have to say that Dockland did bring a lot of new play style and other new opportunities to um, to optimize your empire. So, and this you can see is the export import there. So that was Dockland. Then moving to the tourist season, which uh, recently got out. So the tourist season doesn't bring another um, region either, but it does bring a new tier, which is called the tourist. And those tourists um, that you can have basically everywhere on your uh, old world islands are in new type of houses called hotels. These are very big um, they, ha they can house at the maximum 500 um, tourists, and they are very new new needs. Let's say you know it's um, you have a lot of new um, production chains, and in particular, they need to be fed in restaurants, cafes, and bars. And you can see in each of these, you have different recipes where you need, for example, here sugar, champ oh, sorry, sugar, champagne, and also. Um, I um, don't remember how it's called, but one of the, this is a new good that's produced now in the new world. And that's going to make, you know, this Montmartre, uh, which is a drink in your bars. They also need a lot of new, they also need a lot of old things, sorry, like uh, zoo, museums, etc. And they need to be all of this linked by buses, which is uh, a new mechanic, a bit like your your railways that were linking your oil to your uh, oil power plant and oil refineries. These tour, tour buses link your hotels to all of these important things. And then lastly, um, there is a new quest or a new storyline around your iron building the iron tower, so sort of the Eiffel Tower, right? Um, in uh, in your city so that is uh, the tourism season that just went out so a lot of new i would say mechanism functionality mechanisms um, but not a lot of improvement to your old city right it's almost like uh, once again something uh, on the side so this is the tourist and then lastly the eye life which we don't know yet that much yet. But what we do know is basically you will be able to build uh, taller buildings, right? Instead of, of just uh, the current one that we have. Um, from what I heard, it's either taller engineers or investors or both um, to be able to put a lot more of these in you know, the same square miles. So that will probably, that may enable us to actually get to new population records that are right now um, mainly based on scholars. There will probably be also, from what we hear, a few new goods um, for, for these people, but we honestly don't know yet that much. So here are all the um, seasons and DLCs. Now to the question of which one I would suggest. Well, to be honest, it depends. And it depends on what you like this game. 
right? Why are you playing this game or what is your objective? I see a couple. The first one is beauty uh, buildings. So let's say for beauty buildings, obviously the content packs can help, right? Because you get a lot of um, unique ornaments that also many other peoples may not have. So your city can look quite different. Then on top of that for beauty, the botanica can bring some beauty, right? That's definitely true. Um, for beauty, the passage is not really that useful. Sunken treasure can help, especially to have one big, beautiful capital. Then most of these don't really help for beauty, to be honest. The seat of power can help you a bit because the palace is huge and beautiful um, and will also make the game a bit easier. And then lastly, I would say Dockland. I mean, except if you want to have a big arbor that's, uh, and you, you consider that beautiful, a Dockland is not really useful. The tourist season by, you know, by the theme itself and what it brings is, in my opinion, quite linked to, to beauty. Uh, I'm not saying it's going to be, you know, mandatory for your beauty sessions, but it brings completely new buildings, right? Does, um, these uh, hotels, this restaurant, these bars, um, the Eiffel Tower. So all of this can bring so for a great uh, beauty building theme. And on top of this, right, is given that you need to have museums, hotels, and all of this for the tourists, it will force you, in a sense, to make a beautiful city. So now to conclude, if you're into uh, beauty building, I would say buy uh, content packs, start with the content packs, then by Botanica, then by Tourist, and then potentially, you know, Seat of Power or Sunken Treasure. So that was the first, if you're into beauty building. Now, if you're more into min maxing, right? And min ma by min maxing, I really mean here, you just want to have the biggest, baddest um, city ever, right? Empire ever. Well, the first one is definitely Sunken Treasure. Because with Sunken Treasure, you'll get the cape once again so that is huge you want that then the second in my opinion sorry would be land of lion why because land of lion will give you access to scholars and the research institute the scholars uh, with items have the best population density meaning for one square mile that you fit houses into this is what's gonna bring you the most population and secondly, the research institute is critical, you know, because you are going to want, if you're min maxing, you're going to need tons of items. You're going to want to move all your oil fields and things like this. Uh, so Land of Lions definitely is, is a must. And then the next one I would buy if you're min maxing is Bright Harvest because the tractor and silos will, will expand explode <laughs> your productivity like crazy then seat of power also brings a lot of very powerful boost to your economy so definitely all of those three are, are important you don't really need botanica or the passage at this point of course you know, once again you could right and you don't really need tourists at all if you're min maxing Dockland, you can if you want to do you know, penny farthing, cheesing, and things like this, but you, um, this is not your first choice. So once again, if you're into min-maxing, I would say Sunken Treasure, and then Land of Lion, then Bright Harvest, then Seat of Power. And then lastly, I think maybe you, the last, uh, let's say, type of players in Anos would be the one that, that just like to have, you know, a chill experience with a lot of story, uh, a storyline, a lot of quests and things like this. And in that case, I would actually say, you know, that probably starting with something, no, actually probably start with Land of Lion. Because it does bring a new story, uh, a new region, and, and all of the things we said before, like the Research Institute may help you just have a chill game because you you can find items easily and things like this. So this one is definitely the first. If you're into a chill game with uh, good stories. And then we'll go back to season one. 
because if you remember in the passage and sunken treasure both both of these are, have, have good storylines completely new storylines um, I would probably say maybe the passage first and then sunken treasure just because the, the passage story in my opinion is, is a lot more unique and interesting and yeah if you're in you know into that story mode that that's basically what you can buy first of course you can still buy all the other for for the reason mentioned before but um that's not the ones i would buy first so it is ladies and gents for my rundown of all of the dlcs and which one to buy depending on on what type of players you are please if you disagree with anything i said if i think i missed something critical don't hesitate to share in the comments below or to join my discord if you like this video please press the like button or subscribe to the channel it does help tremendously and lastly if you have any request for a follow-up video on, on a specific topic don't hesitate i'd love to hear about it okay thank you